Welcome to a new video. My name is Jaylene and here we talk about faith, motherhood, beauty, and all other kinds of things. If you're interested in that, be sure to subscribe. And I'm so happy to have you guys back for another video. Today I just wanted to do like a chill, get ready with me style video and kind of free flow on this topic that the Lord has had on my heart for the past couple weeks. And that's the topic of forgiveness. I just wanted to talk about the power of forgiveness in my life, how it has changed and healed me, how it has brought me to Jesus. Yeah, I just kind of wanted to make it its own separate testimony. There's a lot of people out there that can relate to losing a loved one or feeling wronged in their lives and feeling this burden of bitterness against God or against that person. And I'll try to link all the products that I use in this video down below so that you can go ahead and check out what I used. There are so many hurts in this world. They're suffering all over this world in grand ways, in personal ways, in little ways, and in big ways. And in no way am I trying to debunk or diminish anybody's hurt. I understand what it's like to be hurt on some level. So um, whether it is more intense than your understanding or not, I feel like we've all experienced either suffering itself or the effect of it. And that is obviously because of, you know, what I believe as a Christian. Um, I don't know why I just did that. I just put concealer on top of the paint pot. We're just going to roll with it. Sin is something that we deal with, not just us as, you know, sinners, but also how our sin affects people. And I didn't understand that growing up. Um, I didn't have a good concept or grasp on the fact that all have fallen short of the glory of God nobody has done good no not one i wanted to just be clear that i don't know what you're going through out there but i really pray that something in this message in this time that we're chit-chatting blesses you speaks to you encourages you to seek god and the biggest thing you could ever do the best thing you could ever do is seek the word of god seek the face of jesus seek him in spirit and truth and he will answer you he will comfort you he will provide for you in spiritual ways and sometimes even physical ways if it aligns with his will so i just wanted to say that preface that and um so i guess i'll start off with my personal background um with i guess i haven't looked up the antonym for forgiveness um but i would say it's somewhere along the line of bitterness to me, the opposite of forgiveness is bitterness. And I had so much of it. And I still, if I don't let the Holy Spirit keep me in check, I will still let bitterness creep up in my heart. So it is something that we're prone to do as humans. Our hearts are deceitful. If you haven't seen my testimony, definitely be sure to check it out. But my parents divorced when I was four years old. And I also didn't, I've kind of tarried on sharing this testimony because I don't want to speak badly on my dad. Um, my dad has passed away. I don't even think I mentioned that in that video, but my dad passed away about two years ago now. I just, I want to make sure that I'm still glorifying God in the way that I speak about people because that's another thing that God has been convicting me of and trying to grow me in. Basically, when my parents divorced, I had a very jaded understanding of what was going on because I was so young. And even as much as they tried to explain it to me, really the only things that i understood from it are that um when i asked my mom it was my dad's fault and when i asked my dad it was my mom's fault and so i just wasn't this jaded space of confusion i would see other families that were all a united um nuclear is that the word nuclear family and i would get so jealous and envious and bitter like why is that not me and deep down inside i was bitter with god um, I don't remember specifically if I ever prayed to God and asked him or shook my fist at him. I don't recall any specific moment of that, but I know understanding now in retrospect, the condition of my heart was rebellion against God. Uh, I grew up telling friends and people that I grew up alongside that I don't even claim to have a father. I would say that I don't even have a father. I don't have a dad because he never showed care for me. Okay, there's also one more quick thing I wanted to mention that I forgot to mention, and it's the fact of this whole phrase, daddy issues. Growing up, I always um, was even more pulled into insecurity, and this is how the devil can work, just to give you a little glimpse. Without people even knowing that they're being used by the enemy, um, 
basically he was using people to discourage me even more from seeking forgiveness and what it's all about. It was a thing. I don't know how it is in grade school nowadays, but growing up in grade school, either I would hear it come up in conversation, it would come up in conversation with me, but this big joke of, oh, that girl has daddy issues. Nobody wants a girl with daddy issues. And it was something that I heard um, often. And if you are a younger person, or even if not, if, if this is something that has bothered you or does bother you currently, don't let the enemy prevail. I say, according to the Lord's will, may the Lord's will prevail in your life because there is so much more than scoffers and mockers that this life has to offer. You don't have to be subject to them. You could be subject to the one who made you and his truth and what he has to say about daddy issues and how you can be healed from that. You are not defined by the effects of the sin of your parents or your grandparents or your ancestors. You can be redeemed by Christ today. Today is the day of salvation and I want you to be set free as much as I feel set free because of Jesus and him setting me free. So I guess I wanted to kind of share that little thought as well and encourage you guys with that. The time I spent with my dad growing up dwindled and dwindled to be less and less of any sort of quality time. And a turning point I want to say was when around the sixth grade, um, he ended up moving states. So he moved from Florida to New Jersey. And before that, we had been seeing him, or I, I at least had been seeing him every other weekend, I want to say, or at least like once a month. And that that was good for me to have a sort of relationship with him growing up. And um, yeah, so trying to at least have a relationship with him. And then at the turning point of like 11, 12 years old-ish, he moves up to New Jersey and I remember that just triggered that deep-rooted bitterness again in me. It triggered me to be like, why are you moving away from me? Now I'm not even going to be able to see you. Our relationship did dwindle. Um, we kind of barely talked. Holidays, birthdays is when we would have, I want to say like two-minute conversations. And I do want to say, um, you know, my dad did struggle with things which is part of the reason why my parents got in a divorce. And I don't want to go too much into detail because sin is sin at the end of the day. I don't need to sit here and tell you what he was dealing with, but the effects of what he was dealing with and the sin that he was dealing with was holding him back from having a sober-minded um, approach to our relationship. And it really did cause bitterness in my sisters and I. And fast forward, and again, I encourage you to listen to my testimony. When Jesus saved me, in a radical way because I had strayed really far um, into the new age movement. Once he made that change, God began a healing work in me. One night, it was a, a ladies fellowship night, I want to say, through my church. And um, I remember we watched a movie. I want to say it was War Room. That movie left me leaving, feeling the opposite of inspired after we watched it. I just remember being filled with, again, this spirit of bitterness in me and being like, why were they able to reconcile their problems as a family? And I wasn't able to reconcile problems with my family growing up. Like I didn't have that growing up. And now I'm feeling like I'm never going to have that because I wasn't raised with, you know, again, I'm not trying to speak badly or anything. Like my mom grinded and grinded to keep my sisters and I along a, what she thought was the best path for us. And for that, I am so grateful that the Lord kept me through her. The Lord showed me faith through her and shaped me into the woman that I am through her. So um, what I'm trying to say is that because I didn't have that nuclear family in my head, because I didn't have that fatherly figure in my family, um, I felt like I was not only missed out or robbed of that in my childhood, but I also was going to rob my future self of that experience, of having that family, of finding a man that finds me worthy and valuable. Um, this is going to be emotional and I, I wasn't even expecting it because I didn't feel valuable or worthy enough of um, the relationship that I never had with my own father. And again, one of my best friends, Megan, I mentioned her in my testimony too. God used her to bring me to Jesus. She prayed over me that night when I expressed this bitterness. 
and she was like I just I remember the Holy Spirit used her to encourage me so much of like God is gonna bring you a man that you would have never thought or imagined a man of God that is going to glorify God in your family and always seek that first I'm gonna cry off my makeup um but <laughs> yeah so I just I remember that being um a very key significant moment that evening and so much healing came from it. Spoiler alert, God did bring me an amazing man of God. It is such a huge blessing to be able to have a marriage and a family to where we are shaped and molded and seeking and att attempting to glorify God in everything we do. And it has shaped and sharpened me as a woman of faith in more ways than I could have ever imagined. So yeah, uh, God can transform you. Here's your testimony. God can change you. He can change your life. So amen. I already have that father. I already have that heavenly father. If you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and that God raised him from the dead, if you are yearning for his truth, if you are seeking and following him, you are not only saved, but you are healed. The Bible says by his stripes, we are healed. By his wounds, we are healed. When Jesus was nailed to that cross and died for our sins, he died for your hurts he died for your sins and the effects of sin that you felt all your life. You on the other side of the screen, who I'm talking to. So that was just another powerful thing that because of Jesus, I have eternal dwelling with my heavenly father, the father of fathers. You're telling me that now the most high God is my father? What did I do to deserve that? Nothing. And that's another thing that wants makes me want to cry. Nothing. I've done nothing to deserve that. But yet God was so infinite in grace and mercy that he sent his son to die for us and be raised again so that we may have that gift of eternal life. And it's nothing that you can do to earn it. Um, I just want to make that clear. Every time that I say the gospel, there's nothing you can do to earn God's salvation. It's nothing. It's only by faith in Jesus that you can be saved. And that really freed me from a lot of perspectives of how I thought of myself um, and, you know, I guess just confidence in the Lord, walking in confidence in the Lord and knowing that you are imperfect, but you want to glorify and display and magnify his glory and stop looking to yourself. It was a big perspective shift for me. And through that, God did so much healing, refining in my character and my attitude and my relationships with my mom and my dad. So fast forward to... I want to say it was 2019, 2018 maybe. A friend of ours through the church, his little brother had passed away. I remember as this funeral was wrapping up, we were kind of like fixing to clean up and wrap everything up because I was mainly there like to support, you know, as the body of Christ and to help, to mourn with them and just to be there however I was needed. As soon as this funeral ended, I get a call from my sister. I'm still at the funeral. I'm still at the church. I get a call from my sister and she is in tears and my heart sank because I automatically already knew. You know when, I don't know if anyone else has experienced this out there, when you get that phone call and you just know something is wrong, like something is wrong. I could feel it churning in my belly. And so when I answered and she was just like, hey, so basically she let me know that my dad had been diagnosed with stage four cancer. Um, and just, I mean, imagine you just witnessing hundreds of people mourning somebody's death and then literally just stepping out of that and immediately getting a phone call that your dad has stage four cancer. That really did wreck me emotionally. I just kind of broke down because I didn't know what to do. I was like, I can't believe this is happening right now. So it was definitely a shock to say the least. And as I processed it more, he had a lot of church hurt. He had a lot of church hurt and I could just tell by the conversations I had with him that he had been hurt by somebody. I never asked for specific details. I guess that's one thing I kind of, you know, regret. I wish I would have asked more. He got into remediation. They were able to remove the cancer and praise God, he was able to do that and allow my dad to be with us for that time longer. Do, 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 do. Once my dad's cancer was healed and they were able to remove it, 
he kind and this is by his own admission too he kind of slipped back into his old ways back into the sins that he before was partaking in so we still kind of you know still kept in touch and talked then eventually his cancer came back and it's kind of looking like it's not going to be the kind of situation or outcome like it was before i feel like when you go through the process of grief through cancer and almost like an anticipation of grief and losing someone it is it is a blessing but it still has its own burdens and sorrows of its own if that makes sense it's kind of like i don't know i guess it's like ripping off a band-aid slowly versus not but then at the same time you could argue that like you still you get more time with that person so i don't want to say that it's better or worse in any way um grief is grief i was coming to terms with the fact that okay my my dad is gonna pass away soon i don't know when that is only the lord know but um so i tried to make as many trips again up to new jersey to visit him my sisters and i did and at this point um i was getting engaged i was getting married unfortunately he was not able to attend my wedding because he was already pretty sick at that time my husband was able to ask for his blessing which was a huge blessing <laughs> um and then even to the point where i got pregnant with my first daughter and I was able to share the news with him for the first time that he was going to be a grandfather, which again was a huge answered prayer because um, I didn't expect to cry when I talk about this. But um, that was just a huge blessing because I mean, I'm not there in my stage of life yet, but just by telling the um, reactions of my parents, all of my other parents reactions to becoming a grandparent and how joyful they were, I am just so grateful that he was able to experience a glimpse of that joy he ended up passing away when i was about eight weeks pregnant and um that was in may of 2022 it happened pretty late in the night i think it was like 2 a.m or something like that i honestly can't remember again but well, my other sister called me and basically she told me that um he had passed away um my husband woke up because he heard me crying and we kind of just sat on the phone and just cried for a while and you know processing the fact that you just lost somebody it is a spiritual experience it really is because um when you're brought to the end of yourself or you're brought to the terms with death and life and all of that it causes you to look to your creator um it causes you to look to your purpose and your meaning in life thankfully though and this is where i want to share this part of the message is that i was able to share with my dad when I went back to visit him for the last time, I was able to basically, cause I had never even thought of this and I tarried on this until the 11th hour, which is probably my own fault for not wanting to be obedient to God. Um, but basically I was able to sit down with my dad and I was able to tell him like, hey, I forgive you. He never really asked me. He never asked me for forgiveness in my life for the things he has done to my mom the things he has done to hurt my sisters and I, he has never asked for forgiveness. But because I know that God first forgave me, I was able to forgive him. And realizing that I need to tell him that before he passes away because I want him to know that that's the power of forgiveness is that you can only truly forgive someone if you have first been forgiven. And if you realize that, that is where the healing comes. And that is where the transformation comes in your heart to be able to f forgive others who wrong you. And I'm only able to forgive you because God has forgiven me and he offers you and me that same forgiveness. And right then and there, I was able to pray with him. I was able to read the Bible with him and I was able to share the gospel with him. And that was another huge encourage, encouraging testimony and when i asked him i said are you for certain that you're going to heaven are you accepted by christ and he said yes so i'm gonna hold on to that hope and i'm gonna believe that he is in heaven he is rejoicing with god he is going to glory and one day i'm gonna be able to see him again and i pray that i was able to glorify god through telling this story and telling his part of his story my dad was um a g he had really cool fashion he had cool friends and there are so many stories that i never really got to hear from him growing up that i wish i would have known and i hope maybe i will know one day there is a huge blessing in forgiveness and um let me finish doing my makeup before i cry it all off <laughs> praise the lord for his grace for showing me it 
Um, that's the only reason I'm able to proclaim his name. Lip gloss. So if you're out there unpacking and going through your trauma in life, whether that be losing a loved one, whether that be going through somebody who has wronged you, or even if you're going through you wronging somebody else and processing and unpacking that. The other day I shared this on a YouTube shorts as well. The Bible is full of encouragement and comfort for those who are mourning, for those who are brokenhearted. The Bible says that the Lord is near to those who are brokenhearted. God desires a broken and contrite heart for us to come to him. He doesn't desire sacrifices. He doesn't desire us to do something for him. He desires us to be at the end of ourselves and be in, des in desperate need of him. I also encourage you to read the story, um, the parable of the prodigal son. Um, my husband and I were able to do a lesson on that to the youth in our church that we used to go to. I think I might have that video still somewhere, that message or that sermon. So if I still have that, if you guys are interested in seeing it, maybe I could upload it here to YouTube. We'll see what we do. So I wanted to share 2 Corinthians, an encouragement to you all from Paul, starting in verse 3. So chapter 1, verse 3. God offers comfort to all. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is our merciful Father and the source of all comfort. He comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others. When they are troubled, we will be able to give them the same comfort God has given us. For the more we suffer for Christ, the more God will shower us with his comfort through Christ. Even when we are weighed down with troubles, it is for your comfort and salvation. For when we ourselves are comforted, we will certainly comfort you. Then you can patiently endure the same things we suffer. We are confident that as you share in our sufferings, you will also share in the comfort God gives us. We think you ought to know, dear brothers and sisters, about the trouble we went through in the province of Asia. We were crushed and overwhelmed beyond our ability to endure, and we thought we would never live through it. In fact, we expected to die. But as a result, we stopped relying on ourselves and learned to rely only on God, who raises the dead. And he did rescue us from mortal danger, and he will rescue us again. We have placed our confidence in him, and he will continue to rescue us. And you are helping us by praying for us. Then many people will give thanks because God has graciously answered so many prayers for our safety. Now, obviously, in this case, Paul is talking about more of the persecution for being a Christian aspect. God is the source of all comfort. And not only that, not only will he comfort you if you seek him, he will use you as a testimony, just as I am now. If there's one person that's encouraged by this, hallelujah and praise the Lord. But that's exactly what Paul is talking about. He's using my sufferings of the past to comfort others. I'm really blessed to have the privilege and the ability to share this story, to share another piece of my testimony and another layer of it. If you guys were encouraged or inspired by it, please leave a comment below and let me know. Let me know how I can pray for you and whatever you're going through in life. You don't have to go too deep in it. Just say, pray for me and I'll pray for you. And I'm encouraging you to pray for believers everywhere. We're called to do that as well. As believers, we are called to pray for other believers at all times. Pray for believers everywhere. We all need it. I hope that this was encouraging to you guys and I pray that you are doing well whatever time you're watching this video and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.